Hello and good morning, South Bay. I am Leslie Robbins, your host here at South Bay TV. It's so great to be here with you again in this new year. Yes, Happy New Year to all of you and your families. I hope you rang in 2022 safely and with as much joy and happiness as the coronavirus pandemic will allow. Now, if you're just tuning in, we are South Bay TV, a new live streaming platform reflecting the South Bay lifestyle covering cities from El Segundo to San Pedro and all the towns in between. We are basically your local community online. On our channel, we cover a variety of topics, including health and wellness, fashion and beauty, art and music, food and entertainment, and just recently with this new show, local news and events. So in addition to bringing you all this fresh content, we of course want to engage with you. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and our online newsletter be notified of any new stories and when we go live. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, so you can be up to date with all the latest information and happenings around town. Well, what did happen around town recently was all that rain and those cold temperatures, which definitely worked well for an annual tradition in the South Bay, the Hermosa Beach New Year's Day Polar Bear Swim which has been going down since 1990. And oh my, this year, the air was 50 degrees and the ocean water 58 degrees at the Hermosa Pier. Brave souls, I tell you. Okay, also on New Year's Day, the 2022 Rose Parade made its way down Colorado Boulevard in Pasadena. And yes, while each year float entries are submitted and sponsored from all over the US, our very own South Bay was very well represented. Most notably, there was a float by the Lundquist Institute based in Carson, which prides itself on saving lives through science. And their entry and theme was called impositivity, a term to them that means optimism against impossible odds can lead to great breakthroughs. There was Wetzel's Pretzels, yum, which now as a company is located in Pasadena, but the chain was actually started in 1994 right here in Redondo Beach at the South Bay Galleria. Well, this was their first appearance in the Rose Parade, and their float was called California Cruisin', as a reminder that it's not about the destination, but rather enjoying the journey. The Lions Club International, which has several chapters throughout the South Bay, had a float with the theme, Quest for Kindness, helping to end school bullying. And last but not least, Torrance's Rose Parade Float, the city's 66th entry into the parade, featured an African elephant and colorful toucan, promoting awareness of endangered species. And it actually took home the Princess Trophy for the most outstanding floral presentation. Well, talk about an outstanding presentation. I took in the South Coast Botanic Gardens GLOW, which actually stands for Garden Lights and Ocean Waters, and it is breathtaking. It's a nighttime light experience where guests can see the garden's plant collections, literally all aglow. It's in Palos Verdes and still going on until Monday, January 17th, so go check that out. Okay, so given it is the new year, and a new year is all about a quote-unquote new you and new year's resolutions what a great time to learn about how to take our best steps forward so helping us to do that we kathy alessandra and i would like to welcome to the studio energy awareness coach casey mccrossin welcome to the studio Hello. casey thank you so much for having me it's great to see you now tell the viewers what exactly you do now i will say your instagram handle is called flip your energy so Obviously, it has something to do with that. Absolutely. So I am an energy awareness coach, and what I do is I help my clients flip their energy. It's exactly that. Um, a lot of us, what happens in our life is we hold on to emotions inside of our bodies. And we don't even know that we have these emotions, and they can show up in our dating life as you know, non-committal partners that they have or just being stuck in a rut and not really sure how to move forward. What does that next step look like? And so what I do is I can identify what these exact emotions are that you're holding on to, get to the root of where they're coming from, and then we actually work through the process of releasing them through Reiki. I pull tarot cards. Um, so what I do is I use Reiki um, and then also emotion code, which is the process where I can identify the exact emotion. Uh, we get to the root of where the emotion is coming from, a specific age time frame that it happened in your life, and we work through actually judging ourselves because we already judge ourselves anyway. So it's a way for us to 
just work through the judgment and I help the clients with that process and I use Reiki to release and we use the chakra system as well. So I am psychic so I can see color. And so what I do is I identify in the body where the emotion is stuck by identifying the color is according to which chakra is blocked. And so what a chakra is, is energy flowing through our bodies and we have seven different chakras and it starts from the bottom of your feet and moves all the way through the top of your body. And if you think of it like a kitchen sink, right? If there's a clog in the kitchen sink, then it's not gonna go flowing. So it could be anywhere in your body. So it can show up as injuries. A lot of times I work with athletes and even myself personally. Um, I discovered that I had an injury um, that was causing me to have shoulder pain, um, but it was through my heart chakra that was blocked and it was from a wrist, I broke my wrist when I was 13 years old. And when I found out what had happened, I tied it back to what had happened to me um, when I was going through, when I was 13 years old, when it happened, my parents were going through a divorce. So mm -hmm. it is exactly, you know, tied back to that time in my life where then it trickled through the rest of my life, which showed up as, you know, dating non-committal partners over and over again. And so I was able to use this technique and, you know, my background is in pharmaceutical sales. And so my job is always to find, you know, have the problem and then find the solution, right? And so what I did, I was able to create a four-step approach. So that allows for us to streamline this process for people um, to really just help them heal and help them heal faster. Wow. Now you mentioned a bit ago, you read cards. That's yes. fascinating. How does that even work? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's all for your intuition. And I started pulling cards just this is actually my very first deck of cards ever. This is by Doreen Virtue. I think these are, I don't even think she makes these anymore, um, but it's a healing card. And so I just, every day would pull a card just to really give me a sense of hope, you know, for my day, you know, just to start my day and to really also then check in with my energy and see where I was blocked or maybe I could use assistance and also too, who was thinking about me if I was dating somebody, <laughs> you know, just kind of spy and do those fun things like that. Um, and then I just really, I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, and so I grew up with psychics in the back of our bookstores. So, you know, growing up, this is something that was very common for us um, to always call a psychic. So when I was, you know, I, I, something I've, again, just always leaned on, you know, to just give me that insight and hope. Okay, well, let's see yeah. what you got. Let's yes. do a little tester. So yeah. what we'll do um, is I figure it would be something fun for us to do is to just do a spread for the new year. Yeah. Um, we'll do a four-card spread just to kind of see, gauge each quarter of the year as to what's going to come for us. And then I'm going to go through the angel healing cards after to really identify what exactly it is that we can work through to heal. Is How this for the whole entire globe or South Bay or us or it's gonna be who is a this for? It's going to be more specific okay. to you ladies <laughs> and we'll see who picks All right. which. Like, we'll see which yeah, direction yeah. happens. But I'm going to use these, but these are the angel tarot cards by Radley Valentine. And so what I do is I'll just go through and as you can see, they pop out. And so that's where I know that that's the card. And this is really fun. The Night of Fire. <laughs> The confident, passionate, adventurous man coming on in. <laughs> okay. Uh, you must be you. I right? don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh, that popped out. So we'll take this card. This is going to be the second card, I would say, for the second part of the year, which is the magician. Um, the magician is all about just you have your power within you to do whatever it is that you want. And... That's exactly right. Wait, right. I want to share that with you. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good. No. All right. Ooh, this one wants to come too. Okay, so the eight of fire, speed, activity, and multitasking. This is really all about action. Things are going to start moving forward, I would say, about the summertime, August, September. Wait, we have to wait till summer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that car, next car better be like February. <laughs> right? So then this is the end of the year. This card here is the Ace of Air, inspiration, communication, and adjustments that will need to be made. Okay, so we have the Ace of Air here, which is inspiration, communication, and adjustments. So if there's any bumps in the road that come along, it's going to be taken care of. Just take it as communication that's going to be coming in. It's going to be good. All right. So that's the four quarters of the year card spread. And then I want to pull angel cards just to really give us an idea of what you can do personally to really help move past this energy or move not past it, but just let's move through it. The COVID 2021 energy, exactly. is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes. Okay, meditation. 
That makes logical sense, right? <laughs> we need to get into our own energy, make our own you know, choices. Okay. So then I asked the angels, what is blocking us right now? And it's self-acceptance, which makes logical mm -hmm. sense for this year. Going inwards to meditate is something that we all need to be doing, but then also really focusing on how do we just accept ourselves? And that's one of the things I work a lot with my clients on is accepting all the parts of ourselves, the good, the bad, the ugly, right? We have to be able to just honor who we truly are. And when you step into your truth, that's truly where you shine. And that's really what we need to look forward to right now. Okay, and then the angels are helping us right now. Let's see. Oh, good. That's <laughs> nice to hear. All right? You get a little help. That's good. Yeah. That's good. A little help from your friends. That's good. Let's see. They don't want to help us too quickly right now. Um, let's pull this. Ooh, romance. <laughs> So if anybody out there is looking for a uh, love partner, it's definitely in the air. <laughs> and then the outcome card is focus. I love this card because it's focusing on what you do want and not what you don't want, mm -hmm. which obviously is a great thing for us right now, especially with after what we've been going through over the last few years. If we focus on the negative, we're gonna attract the negative. And as an energy awareness coach, I really work heavily with my clients on attracting what they do want in their life is to live what they actually truly want. And that's what's gonna come into their life. So that's the overall card spread that I have for you guys. <laughs> that's actually very positive and it's forward yeah. thinking. And you say the word clients a lot, so obviously you have many clients. What is something that most people are coming to you right now about? You you mentioned relationships a lot uh, yep. to me right now, just sitting here, men, women. Uh, so. What are people coming to see you about? A lot of people that I see are actually looking for a relationship. They're successful women. I see a lot of women that are successful in their careers and they're just like, I don't understand. Why am I not finding this person that I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with? And so that was me, you know, eight years ago. And so I can completely relate to those types of individuals. And really what it is, is it's a lack mindset. And we have this I want, and it really works for everyone, and not just looking for a relationship, is when we come from a place of, of lack and saying, I don't have a boyfriend, or I don't have the career or the job that I want, we're gonna continue to stay in that, that energy, which is that focus card, right? So it aligns with the fact that we need to really truly feel happy within ourselves, and I know that's so cliche, and to be honest with you, I don't like that necessarily to say that, um, but for me personally, one of the things I work with my clients directly, especially if they're looking for a mate, is what are you already, what do you have in your life to attract that abundance? Um, you know, we really just want to make sure that we have the abundance that we want. You know, I, for me personally, I did, what it, instead of setting new intentions this year, for me it was what was I successful at last year so that I can flip my energy. You know, that's the goal is we need to flip your energy so that we can take that next step forward and really truly be happy with ourselves. I think one of the things that, especially with successful individuals, is that we tend to not celebrate the small wins in our life and we overshadow ourselves. And it's like, oh, well, I should have done that, right? Versus actually celebrating the fact that you got up and made a really good cup of coffee this morning, you know? <laughs> like that's an accomplishment and we need to learn how to celebrate ourselves. And when we start to do that is really when we'll start to attract the things that we do want in our life. Well, I would say, what do you think are three quick tips that anyone can carry with them throughout the day just to have a better day, a better mindset? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. For me personally, I start my day, I set my alarm clock on my phone and I put list five things that you're grateful for. And so every the first thing I see in the morning is list five things because it's saved on my phone. And personally, that has really shifted and flipped my energy. and totally changed my mindset is to just start my day with that um, a lot of times too i share with people meditation obviously that's showed up here it is it is so critical for me and it's really not you know i think a lot of times people get so confused with how do you meditate i can't meditate i have all these squirrels that are going on in my mind and for me personally the squirrels are there to talk to you <laughs> listen that's all you have to do is just listen to what they have to say and that's you know you always say oh i have to write my list great put a list next to you and write it down that's what your squirrels are telling you that you need to do for the day um and it just set a clock for five minutes to do that it doesn't take that long 
Um, and then I would so the third one is positive affirmations. Um, I would highly recommend any type of angel healing card, oracle cards that you can find. Um, I know one of my good friends has confident cards for moms, and it's just a daily affirmation card to just really set your day, you know, set the tone for your day, and that's it. Well, I think you set the tone for our day. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Casey, for being in Thank studio. You. This was really exciting to just watch and hear you. Really good stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And all of you out there, stay tuned. We will be right back. Welcome back to Good Morning South Bay. Back with me in studio is SBTV host Kathy Alessandra. Now, Kathy, we just had Casey on the show. Really inspiring stuff. You are a coach as well for mm -hmm. businesses. Tell me about that. Yep, absolutely. Well, she was amazing. That was phenomenal. So much fun, right? So I actually work with small business owners in helping them kind of set some goals and intentions. She talked about intentions. We're looking at the beginning of the year here, and she's talking about the energy of you know, the conglomerate, right? Everybody and where it's going. So anyway, as a business coach, I'm working with mostly women entrepreneurs to really find some goals and hold some of those resolutions. So what I wanted to share with you, I read an interesting article the other day. One of our, um, one of our other hosts who does a health and wellness show with us, she had written an article about resolutions versus goals, right? And the difference between a resolution and a goal. So the idea with the resolution is that it is the, the bigger intention right? I'm going to resolve to grow my business. I'm going to resolve to lose weight. That's my resolution for the year. But the goals are the little tiny pieces that we need to put into place, the steps, the daily tasks that we need to put into place. And it's so important to be looking at some of those goals this year, right? And where is it that you want to grow? You know, with, with my clients I work, it's health, wealth, life, love, and business. So you're looking at everything, That's right? That's a lot of categories. Yeah. It is. It's because, you know, for, it's particularly for women that I work with, Right, it's one of the same. Right? You can't have one without the other, and um, and so you got to look at those all those areas in your life. So, what are some goals that you can set for your business? Is it monetarily? Is it number of clients? Is it launching a new business, a new product, or program or service? Um, if it's health related, you know, is it to run that marathon? Is it to hike, you know, the tallest mountain in the world? Is it to lose weight? Right. And then, what are the steps that you're going to take to get there? And a really great way to do that is break it down by quarter. And she talked about. The quarterly cards, right? She had a card for each quarter in the beginning of her reading there. Um, and really breaking them down, chunking it down to what yes. you want to accomplish each quarter, down to what you want to accomplish each month. It's going to get to that quarterly go, which really takes you down to what it is you need to wake up daily and do. Yes. I was just going to say what you're telling your businesses to do, people need to do on a personal level as well. It's baby steps, one step, the next step. It's all the steps that lead you to that goal. And then that's a routine. It has to be a routine in order to reach that goal. And what you're talking about for businesses, people could really use that in their personal life as well, not just getting the biggest goal right away. It's the steps before that mm -hmm. each day getting to where you need to go. Absolutely. You know, it's really looking at that little tiny step. You know, some people get really stuck and they're not sure, what do I need to do today? Or right? It's taking that one step. What's the one thing? literally the one thing that you can do today that's gonna to move that needle forward in whatever that goal is, right? There's a great book called The One Thing, and it talks about this. You know, when you look at the various areas in your life, what is that one thing? Sometimes it makes it easier. It doesn't, you know, you're not looking at that whole 20 pounds you wanna lose. You're looking at the five pound goal, right? And maybe just walking today, right? It's just a little baby stuff. It's all about small wins, not going for the ultimate prize, small wins. Right, right, and celebrate those small wins. Yes. Celebrate them every day, right? How many of us, you know, we do phenomenal things, right? And then at the end of the day, we're like, well, what did I really get accomplished? And if you really look back and what you did accomplish for the day, nine times out of 10, you're gonna find something that you did that you really gotta be celebrating. Celebrate the small wins. Those are some powerful words to live by. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely.
on Saturday, January 8th at the Mary and Joseph Retreat Center, Sacred Expressions, the Art of Bookmaking. Ginger Donner will demonstrate the process of designing, creating, and completing a simple book. Uh, Donner is an artist whose interests include mixed media painting, glass fusing, metal smithing, and creating handmade books. Using a variety of mixed media techniques, she has created unique journals, scrapbooks, and photo albums. The cost is $40 per person, all materials included. Also on January 8th, their CPR certification at the CPR Certification Los Angeles Center in Torrance. It's from 10 to 11 a.m. Their hands-on in-person CPR training gives the quality of CPR certification cards that employers require. Their AHA CPR certification cards are issued on the same day as the class. Apart from BLS CPR, they are offering first aid, bloodborne pathogens, and pet CPR training as well. They have weekly classes and also do on-site training for businesses and groups. Coming up the entire weekend at the Redondo Beach Performing Arts Center, Encore presents Disney's Descendants, the musical. The shows are Friday, January 7th, 7.30 p.m., Saturday, January 8th at 2 p.m., and on Sunday, January 9th at 2 p.m. On January 8th, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., it's Outdoor Volunteer Day at Abalone Cove Reserve. That's in Rancho Palos Verdes. Volunteer at the newest restoration site on a breathtaking coastal reserve, helping eradicate invasive weeds to protect native species. Sign up at Volunteer Hub. Heading down to San Pedro on Sunday, January 9th, it's the South Bay New Orleans Jazz Club session. Well, they're in session. The price is $12, no charge for musicians who play. The traditional jazz session is free to performing musicians, $12 cover for non-performing guests, and there is room for dancing. And on January 9th, the Torrance Beat Drum Circle is going down. Yes, that drum circle meets every second Sunday of each month. They meet between Miramar Park and the Lifeguard Headquarters on Torrance Beach. They have drums and instruments to share. Once you get to the parking lot at Torrance Beach, follow the ramp down and they'll be there making music on the sand. And they only cancel for wet or rainy weather. And of course, if you have a local story, idea, or event that you would like to share with us, please do so on our website. There's a form right on our homepage that you can fill out and submit. Then someone from our team will get in touch to discuss all the details because it is all about community and engagement and that cannot happen without you. So please take care of you, your town, and each other. Thanks for watching and Happy New Year.